Good morning, everyone. My name is Anne Marie Band. Today is Thursday, July the 13th, and this is the Moneyball Morning Report for the Benzinga Pro platform. I'm starting to hear ridiculous things like people arguing about whether this is a bull market or a bear market. Who cares? Um, Ultimately, what you should always be doing is managing your position relative to risk. That's got nothing to do with whatever else is going on in the market. If you are a tactical trader, irrespective of that. Now, a lot of people would argue with me, but you know what? I'm a simpleton as it goes. I look at the pictures. If they're heading up and they start heading down, I wait for them to fail a retest on uh, old highs. If they don't, I can take a short. If they do, I have a continuation of a long. And that's really what we've seen over the last one, two, three, four days. This morning, we've got uh, initial jobless claims that uh, came in light. Of course, these numbers are always adjusted, and they're never real numbers. Hopefully, you know that. They're all calculations. There's no way that those are real numbers. They simply aren't. None of the numbers that we see are actually real. They're all calculated, and then people revise them over time. So I don't even know why they exist at this juncture. But that's just me going off on one of my diatribes that I tend to do after numbers come out and I start thinking about them for a while. That being said, people are now arguing uh, whether we should continue to the upside, make brand new highs. I think that's a little preemptive. Um, right now, we're still in the middle of a sideways formation. And so tactically, that sideways formation is on the leg of upside pressure into old resistance. That means pullbacks or buy zones. And so what are we looking at today? Remember, candle we're looking at, two candles to the left. Very bullish here and we're above the close of the prior day. Guess when traders are going to start getting nervous about holding longs? When they lose the close of the prior day. Now right now, it doesn't really show that we've got strength moving straight up because we are also not above the high of the prior day. So this appears to be a little bit of a battleground in the small caps. Let's take a look at the ES. Yes, moving delightfully nicely, right? Next line in the sand is going to be the open of this candlestick, which is 45.41. Right now, we're sitting right around 45.27. If you saw any of my tweets, you know I've got zones built on the Motive Wave platform. They're just much easier to find for me because that's where I trade from. And so that uh, gives me a good mechanical flow of motion. But 45.41, 45.87, top side. Where's the floor for today? My suspicion is that it is about 45.12, which is where the bottom of the zone is for the overnight trading formations. And really also equally important is the close of the prior day, which happens to be 4509. So between 4509 and 4512, there's a tiny little gappy action that we could see traders come in and move. Right now, what we can see is that um, we are getting ready to push above the high of the prior day, and indeed we have. And traders are battling at that zone. Obviously, people are long coming in from the pre-market event. Uh, the volume is not, not dramatic in any way. I, the volume overall has been tapering down, right? So here's what we see. Pullbacks or buy zones. Where are we? Candle in motion. Two candles to the left. Everything's bullish. Floor of the formation, 45.06. Pullbacks into that area are going to give you the best risk. And if you want to uh, try a short, uh, I don't know why you'd want to do that at this juncture, but if you want to see if it moves out and up over the pre-market highs. Remember, yesterday I said, hey, here's where I'm right, here's where I'm wrong. 
If I'm wrong, they're going to break the high of the pre-market and it's going to move to the north. That's exactly what happens. Do not make this overly complicated, right? Listen, they're complicated things that try to show why slash where slash when price will move. We do not have those in our analog brains, nor do we usually have exposure to multi-million dollar systems that track thousands of variables during X, Y, or Z timelines. That's not where our wheelhouse is. Our wheelhouse is a visual, tactical approach that says, where is my risk? Can I wait for it to come in to support relative to my larger time frames? And if I watch the clean things, can I see where the breakouts move to the north or pull back to the south? Again, what happened yesterday? I said, hey, listen, if we break that pre-market high, we're going to head higher, walk through the ranges. Here's what we're doing. We're breaking our pre-market high of, yep, excuse me, our high of yesterday, and we are holding the close of yesterday. And so all of this tactically points to either short covering or brand new buyers moving out to the space. Of course, I believe it is short covering. Okay, last thing I want to look at here, and I know I haven't put the SPY up, but I did put it in um, our formations for us to look at. Uh, particularly on the Benzinga the Pro platform. And so you, you can see that there for what we have going on next. Uh, for oil, we've come into this really big area, right? Again, do not suppose that you are sitting in the right side of the trade and then hang on until it works for you. Take a look at what the traders are telling you. And when the traders say, hey, listen, that's no longer resistance, a la I break out and then I pull back and I hold that as support. I've got expansion. We're looking at the same thing. What the strength look like today for oil? Not nearly as strong as everything else looks. The dollar is absolutely imploding, so um, that's something else going on there. But what we are looking at is a high. We tested higher, so it's still in breakout formation, but we are below the close of the prior day. So what will we do? Uh, we'll go to that 50% mark. Hey, listen, for those of you that know I'm a math nerd, 50% uh, is not a Fibonacci number, but uh, we simpleton traders, we use them and they work way better right now than the old Fibonacci's and that is really super interesting. You've got to think about adaptive formations that occur in the market. Side note, never mind, out of there. 50% of this base candlestick formation, you're going to see the buyers come in. It becomes even more prevalent if you can look to the left and see something holding. 75 is another round number. But what do I like to do? I like to go, wait a second, where are we relative to current candle, prior two candles, in retracement of the first prior candle. So ultimately, we should find a floor or a group of buyers that will try to engage somewhere around this line. Listen, trading can be simple, but it is not easy because we think too much about what should be and not what is it's the standard trouble of the human condition. Hey, listen, thank you for watching, and I'll see you all tomorrow.